host Ohio State Buckeyes being introduced. Let's take a look at the starting lineup, first of all, for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And the one thing that stands out about them is the number of players that they have that are nearing the record books in program history in various categories. But their freshman, Natalie Robinson, one of them, she's about to move up to fifth all time in single season blocks. And she's a real leader for them. Yeah, and she's celebrating a sort of homecoming tonight, if I may borrow from you too, out of Hudson, Ohio, up in Summit County in Northeastern Ohio. Uh, she's just one of those people contributing a lot for Rutgers uh, from new players on the flip side. We all know about what Emily Londot does for this Buckeyes team. And of course, she is uh, leading them by far in kills. She and Riley Rader have both had starry careers as Ohio State Buckeyes, both graduates, as you see. And they're doing a great job, in spite of the difficulties with some of the, the youth on the team, they're doing a great job helping to bring those players along, and they'll be much the better for it next year. Yeah, one of the things coaches talked about with both uh, Londa and Raider is not only their play on the court, but their leadership qualities, challenging other players, Londa in particular, making sure that, that Fred, the uh, freshman uh, libero, Olivia Hasbrook, is being tested and is ready, is match ready for Big Ten play, and she's been doing that very well so far as a freshman. See a good crowd on hand. Earlier they set a record for attendance when Nebraska was in. Not quite as many as when they had 92,000 for that outdoor yeah. match, but over 4,100 fans and a good crowd here. In fact, a lot of the Rutgers fans have traveled with their team, sticking with them even despite a winless Big Ten year. Well, they have a few Indiana natives as well as a few Ohioans on the team, and they played in West Lafayette against Purdue on Thursday night, so it was an easy trip for some of their families. Olivia Hasbrook ready to get this match underway. She has 25 aces leading the Ohio State Buckeyes in that category. And we are underway with the opening rally of the match. And it goes over on the left and tipping the ball over neatly for the first kill is Anna Hartman on the left for Rutgers. Pretty easy reception for the Scarlet Knights, able to get into system early, and a nice little touch on the off-speed attempt by Hartman to get the first kill in the first point. Any team will say they're better in system, but especially for a young team like Rutgers, and that looked like it was going to go for an ace, but they were able to quickly react and get it back over. A big bomb from the right side, now a joust at the net, and the ball is kept alive, bump set to the back. Londot with a big swing, and that one is handled Nicely trying to go over on the second ball with Zora Hardison, but she was not able to do it. It had kind of a sheepish grin on her face, and they called four contacts. Yeah, Hardison rushed. She completely mistimed her swing, and that resulted in the double hit and the point inside out to the Buckeyes. Mia Tuman, the Ohio State setter, averaging just shy of 10 assists per set this year. 855 total entering the match. They swing it over to the right, and just long. And when the ball hits the feet of the line judge, they tend to know that it was a bit long. That's a pretty easy decision for a line judge, as you'll see it again, going for the line shot here. And wisely, Hasbrook let it go. That was Hartman again on the swing. This time she swung away. And now Hardison goes on the second ball, but a good coverage on the play by Tuman. They swing from the right again, Hartman, and the ball is blocked, but fails to stay in the court and it will be Hartman's second kill of the match to all and Hardison to serve. Yeah. Talk about shot selection in basketball and some of that applies in volleyball too. Hardison we saw there very smart knowing she had the opening there and was able to go for the off speed shot rather than try for the big swing. And there is the service error by Hardison. She's one block away from the top 10 in program history in terms of blocks. And there's a number of them who are approaching those types of thresholds. And this is Emmy Selman, 6'4 freshman who's had an excellent year, a tough serve, and they overpass on it. They go back on the left, and the line shot for the kill by Grace Egan, and that was all set up by the tough serve. Precisely. Uh, Jen Flynn Olenberg talked about serving being the key to setting up the attack, and it certainly worked the perfection there, and a great line shot there by Grace Egan, the redshirt freshman out of Sterling, Illinois. She had been injured for a part of the year, but back in the lineup and doing extremely well, picking up where she left off. And there's a strong block there by Grace Egan. So first a kill, and now a block as they push it out to the pin on the right. 
Okay, Egan doing it both ways offensively and defensively as she's done throughout the season. 142 kills and also a total of 26 blocks on the season. Emmy Selman played on the U21 national team. There's a great effort by Avery Jesuits to keep that ball alive off the short serve. Now the big swing by Londot, and that had so much on it, it whistles all the way over to the scorer's table. And Ohio State opening up a early 6-2 advantage. Yeah, Londot going for that big cross-court swing, which she's so good at, and she just overpowered Natalie Robertson, Robinson and Avery Jesuits at the net. And even when they had two blockers there, it was insufficient. And a bit of a service run going, another short serve, and that dive to keep it going. However, they're going to have a free ball opportunity here over again, and in too tight for Egan. This time they'll go from the back and into the net, and it will be four contacts as they set Emmy Selman, and she could not just get enough elevation on that shot. Yeah, great idea to set up the back attack from Selman, but the set was a little bit short for her, and she wasn't able to get that over the net. As Rutgers substitute, they'll bring in the Australia under 23 international, Alyssa Kinkella. She is really their go-to hitter. And uh, one of the veterans on the team, but there's a quick in the middle, Ohio State wanted to use their middles more effectively than they did in the Maryland match that they lost yesterday in four. Cross court, kept in the air. And Londot for the tip, and the ball almost pancaked there by the libero. Kenzie, Kenzie Deerstad, but she could not quite get to it in time. Yeah, great effort as Londot saw the space and went for placement rather than power, and it was the right decision, but Deerstad nearly dug that out. You'll see it again. She saw the opening. Deerstad just a half step too late. So playing in her first year at Libera after being a DS, and that is an adjustment to make, but she certainly showed her capabilities there. Over on the left, and Kinkilla with the big swing, and it is touched, so a kill. And looks like Kinkella, but they pronounce it Kinkilla, which yes. makes it the perfect name for somebody such as her. That well, she's actually of Croatian heritage. 29 kills for it set a game record for Melbourne, Australia, where she has played on their national side. And there is a serve down the line, back, and Mondot fires away. And that's really being in the firing line. No, nothing Deerstad could do on that. No, they couldn't, and Rutgers certainly knows what Londot is capable of. When these two teams met here just about a year ago, Londot had a career-high 36 kills in that match. I mean, that's really saying something for a three-time All-American. And that serve is pass. They find the setter nicely that time, and when you can do that, it's a lot better to try to convert, and Natalie Robinson did just that. Yeah, and that ball, it's a little like tennis. A ball hits straight at a player right at the chest of the face as we get a look at the uh, Rutgers coach, Caitlin Schweinhofer, the St. John's alumna. Fifth season at Rutgers and really was building the team in a positive trajectory. This year has kind of broken the pattern a little, but she feels they've got a very good future. Tipped across and off the net there, flared over by... Lexi Vizentine and a swing and a great block there, a double block, and the back row was vacated. And the combination of Kinkilla and Hardison produced the block. Yeah, Kinkilla is one of the better blockers in the Big Ten as well as being one of the best attackers. We get another look at it on the right side. Hardison immediately saw that Kinkilla was going to need help, and she got there and probably got the block assist. Maybe didn't even clear the net, but the presence of the blockers made it very difficult. Again, from beyond the 10-foot line, and a big swing there by, by number 14, Selman. Over there on the back set, and the kill by Brand, Eloise Brandui. And she is one of the top attackers on the squad with 153. She, Selman, and Raider, Riley Raider, supplying secondary and additional options for Mondot as the go-to hitter. And there's Byzantine again. There's a good move there in the back by the Ohio State. Libero has Brook, and the block, though, fails to materialize, and the point goes for Rutgers. Right into the roof put up by Hardison and Kinkela. Again, I mentioned Kinkela's of Croatia and heritage, and I have to resist to call her Kinkela, which is how it would be said in Zagreb and the environs. I have that problem with Russian players. 
Well, us Eastern Europeans, we want to say the names the right way. The way we would say it back in the old countries. And German players, for that matter. <laughs> there you go. Here's a serve <laughs> down the line. Over, and the swing there by Selman. The block is there. Tried to go back out. It looked like it was going to be a joust, but they end up calling a net violation. And it is point for Ohio State and Hasbrook will be serving. They appeared to be a little bit caught in between. They were somewhat fortunate to come out with that point. Yeah, the defense didn't know whether the stick or twist there. And, uh, but as you said, Craig, uh, Rutgers aided them a little bit with the misplay into the net. And that one goes long on the serve attempt by Hasbrook. And that makes the score 8-10. So Rutgers was down 6-2 early, but they're hanging in there. And that's what they do. They had two great matches early in the year, the first weekend of the Big Ten against Michigan and Iowa. It took both of them to five sets. And, and they gave the Michigan State there. a pretty good fight as well. This is Both these teams' records are not uh, terribly flattering. If when you look, just look at the results, the wins and losses, but you look at some of the set-by-set set results, they've given some, both these teams have given good teams uh, in the Big Ten a very good fight all season long. Short serve at 22 ties and 12 lead changes in that Michigan State match. There's a perfect short serve for an ace served up by Mia Tuman. And they've been utilizing that short serve and making it difficult to make that first ball contact. Well, looking at the li line out here, the near side of court, there's a lot more open space over here. We have three players lined up over on that far sideline, and Tuma's looking for that space. Yeah, quick in the middle, Hardison. Kept it alive, though, and they worked it to Salmon on the left, and she puts it away to well, make she, it 13-8. Yeah, she finally got it, overpowered the block. She had taken a couple line shots early. Here you see her lining that up again. Uh, Anna Hartman trying to get up there and deny it, but to no avail. He a great bump set there by the libero, Hasbrook. And then when you can't get the setter to set the ball, it's good to have that secondary option. And that ball goes way long. And that makes it 14 to 8 for and, the Buckeyes. And you bring up a good point, as you mentioned earlier, about getting secondary points from other players. Emily Londat has almost 35% of the points on kills this season for Ohio State. And that's why the contribution that Emmy Selman has made as a freshman coming back after being injured and not playing in any of the non-conference games has really been a big factor for this Ohio State team. She definitely has a bright future. So Ohio State leading Rutgers by a score of 14 to eight. Timeout on the floor, we'll be right back. Ohio State leading Rutgers 14 to eight here. They have had things under relative control in the first set. As a Rutgers tries to get the coach's point. And then one player that we really can be watching for from them is Alyssa Kinkilla. We've been talking about her, but she had the 29 kills, a game record. She was also the first Rutgers player ever to be named the Big Ten Player of the Week. But she had a 5.3 hitting per, a 446 percentage and 5.3 kills per set. And she's close to uh, reaching the uh, top 10 in the career kills category for Rutgers. So she is very, very effective for them, trying to get 1,000 kills for her career. And she's very, very close, 941 coming into this match. And she has uh, two already here, uh, one already here tonight. And a big swing by Londot down the line. And again, too hot to handle there for Byzantine, who is the unfortunate player
trying to defend against that. Yeah, Vizantine's a uh, Houston Rockets fan. I'm not sure if uh, Hakeem Olajuwon would have been able to help her out as we get a look at the Australia Under-23 International. I annoyed her a little bit uh, or beforehand. She's a Richmond Football Club supporter. Well, I support Carlton in the Australian Football League. So. Well, I'm surprised <laughs> you're still on speaking terms. <laughs> Big swing and just long. They've been setting Selman, Ohio State, appealing for a touch, but they are not going to get it. But Selman has been definitely one of their primary attackers here so far in this match. And she plays that left side most of the time, which is to her advantage because she's got the right arm the inside. It's a little like the off wing in hockey, having the left-hand shooter on the right side. Hardison at the service line. In the back set, there's Selman again. This time it was appeared to definitely, I thought, be a touch, but they're awarding the point to Rutgers. Take another look at it here. And I yep, guess not. Yep, I think that was the right decision by our referees. Yeah, very very uh, fast in real time. They've got the best look at it and that service error. And they also depend on sound, too. That's how knowing if they can hear something, they can hear a touch, that helps them out making those decisions as well. As we look at the freshman Selman out of Burtonsville, Maryland. Well, it is Selman back at the service line. Again with the short serve. This time it's handled a little bit more easily. And as a result, they get a good swing and a kill over there on the right. As they worked it to number 14, Anna Hartman. She's got a couple of kills early in the match and another one here. And the excellent reception there from A.V. Jesowitz is what set that up and able to get Rutgers get in system and get into flow and the good pass over there results in the kill and the point for Rutgers. And they're still hanging around in there. If they can put together a little bit of a service run, they could be right back into this. There's a the quick, but the blockers reject that on that swing by Raider. And again, Ohio State calling for the touch and they get it this time. There's no dispute there. Yeah, Kinkella and Robinson teamed up on that one. They couldn't keep that one out for Rutgers, and Ohio State stretches their lead. Riley Raider at 21, All-American for Ohio State. She and Londot, two great players concluding their careers. There's a good dig on that by Avery Jesuits. They go right to the left side, and a good block. Jesuits, who passed her beautifully, then she got to her feet and made a great block, teaming up with Natalie Robinson. Yeah, Jesuits out of Plymouth, Minnesota. Excellent athletically, coming out of Minnesota. <laughs> I'm surprised, I wonder if she spent some time on skates. I bet she'd be great as a defense woman. Serve handled nicely by Londot. And bumped over, they're gonna give Ohio State a free ball. See what they can do with it in the middle, and they do capitalize as Brandewey puts it down to make it 18 to 12, but it was the way Londot passed that tough serve that made that all possible. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Greg. She's been, it kept that play going and caused some confusion on Rutgers side, but also great vision by Brandewey to see the defense and see the opening right in the middle and get the easy put away right up the center. And she what, didn't have a lot of blocking on her and that made it easier down the line and the kill there by Byzantine. She is from Houston, Texas. And now to serve is Deerstad wearing the libero jersey. Their regular setter, Allie Borellis, is out. So that is hindering them somewhat. There's that short serve and they allow overpass but then Ohio State gets the block up and eliminates the chance to capitalize on a free ball. Egan and Brandewey got over. Yeah, it was basically two on one there against Kinkella, the Australian. You'll see it here as they go to the bat with the back set and they were both there in the right place, saw that she was going to go cross court with it, read it well and got the block and the point. And even though Brandewey did not really contact the ball, her presence there made her change what she was trying to do. They bump it out wide. Now she's off the net with a little more room. There's another overpass in the middle. The swing and once again the block and this time Brandewey definitely was involved in it. And again good recognition for Brandewey seeing the defense. They ran the I guess we would call a dummy in football slash soccer with Kinkela coming in from the far side. But Brandewey realized that set wasn't going to her and she was ready right in the middle. 
Another timeout. Rutgers will need a coach's point and a run when we come back. Down 20 to 13 and set one to the Buckeyes. Ohio State up 20 to 13, and certainly their defense has really been aided by the work of freshman Olivia Hasbrook, who we see had 18 digs, and that's the most by a Buckeye at a three-set match this season. A freshman from Missouri, where she was a first-team All-American, she had 15 digs in the Maryland match, so she's really been doing extremely well of late. Yeah, and as a freshman too, and I, I, again, liking the libero position to a goalie in hockey, when the team has that kind of confidence in the libero, knowing she's going to get those digs, it makes everybody better. Big swing. I liken it to a center fielder in baseball. Line. Good, another good analogy. There is uh, Selman with the swing and the kill. And they continue to work the ball to her. Hasbrook also excellent as a service receiver. Only four reception errors in the win loss to Maryland last night. Selman with 170 kills, third on the team. It's been their go-to hitter along with Londot in this match. Tipped over by Byzantine, swinging from beyond the 10-foot line. And that one is handled nicely by Allie Dutton. At the net, trying to go over on the second ball there, but Hardison was ready and waiting and put it right back. Yeah, she was right there looking for that, that quick, sh uh, quick turnaround dink shot and put it away easily. Anna yeah. Hartman returning for Rutgers in place of Kinkella. Lily Bolin, one of the setters, along with Georgia Lee, a freshman and a sophomore, trying to replace the junior regular setter, and that can be disruptive for the team. And there is a service ace by Bolin. Now she, with that, is tied with Lexi Byzantine, and they're both just one away from the top 10 list in Rutgers program history for single season aces, both with 28 now. They go back for Selman, and it's a slight overpass, and then she does the job tipping it over after setting it up with the big swing. But she's yeah, she's learning here. She went for the cross court shot instead of trying to go up the line, as we've seen her do several times in this first set. And the second ball she got, though, she recognized the defense had jumped too soon and was able to get the easy put away by just dumping it over the top. Hasbrook would like to get three more points off her serve and put this first set in the books if they can. But that won't happen as they go over to Anna Hartman, the sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And she has definitely been one of their key players in this match so far. Now Hartman getting leading the team right now and kills with four of the seven that Rutgers have so far in this first set. Murfreesboro, the hometown of the legendary sports writer Grantman Rice, and I bet you know that. Uh, I didn't know that's where he was from. I just know, I just remember going to school at um, Vanderbilt. And it is now 23-16. Well, I found a sports history nugget that Keith Kakinda does not know, so that uh, takes some doing. Again, you flatter me, Greg. I'm very impressed. There's a short serve. It's been working for the Buckeyes in this set, but there it took a great effort by Tuman to keep that ball alive off of Hardison. Out wide to the right. They just have to go for the tip. The back row had moved up and unable to save the play despite a great effort. Grace Egan and Rutgers 
hits their 17th point, trying to at least get to 20, and then anything can happen from there. Yeah, good recognition by Rutgers to see. As you said, Greg, everybody had come forward, leaving the back half of the court exposed, and Rutgers used that to get that point. And in the middle, there's the center fielder analogy. Right. Handled nicely by Hasbrook. Another overpass. They put it down, but it's covered by Lily Bolin in that front row. Bumped over Ohio State with a free ball opportunity out to the right and a big swing by Selman. And a fine block there by Jesuits. Back set to the right. And a swing there by Hartman. That one handled by Egan. Tipped over. This may be the best rally we've had in the match so far. Certainly the longest. Over in a quick set, and they put it away. That is Raider, Riley Raider, the outstanding graduate from Louisville, putting that one away. Yeah, that was her second attempt at one of those quick turnover shots, and she got that one. There it is, off the block. Really high tempo with the set, not letting the blockers get into position. And then she perfectly timed it. And Ohio State with seven set points in reserve, but that serve by Selman doesn't quite get the job done. And in that last rotation, they had Selman and Londot flip-flop. Londot was over on the far side of the court, and they moved Selman over here to the near side. Ohio State fans still on their feet, anticipating the clinching point served by Georgia Lee. You have to bump set that one over, and they really never got the set nor the swing that they wanted as a result. Yeah, it all started for the fact Egan really didn't get a good, well-timed jump on that, and she had, you know, she had time and space to hit the cross-court shot, which was the wise thing to do, but uh, couldn't quite get over top of it. Good passive serve by Egan, but it's covered nicely by Georgia Lee. Now off the net at the 10-foot line, but the shot by Jesuits sales low. They've been able to force a lot of good teams to know that they can't sleep on this Rutgers squad despite their record. And here we go with the second set and quickly a big swing there by Selman and she gets right back into it. She did not have a strong hitting percentage in the first set but she had a couple of early errors and then started to work her way in and there's pretty good evidence of it there. Yeah, that's her fourth kill to go, uh, go in her 16 attacks. She had four errors, as you mentioned, but again, they've moved her back over here to the left side where she played most of the first set. And a service error there by Tuman. And now Selman just one kill off the pace set by Londot for the match. And Rutgers with Byzantine to serve. She's now correct. tied with Bolin with 28 aces on the year. And that will be an error, but she The commentator's curse strikes again. <laughs> if you believe in such things, but I talk about the <laughs> volleyball gods a lot, so I suppose maybe. Same basic principle. I said correct, if someone has three kills, I not asked four. one coach, do you believe in the volleyball gods? And she talked about, no, I believe in rational rationality. But then she talked about the commentator's curse later. <laughs> they pick the side, and right in the middle, and on the overpass, it's put away. In the middle by Raider, Riley Raider, and that's what Ohio State said. They didn't think they got their middles involved enough they're hoping to do that more. This time they were aided by the overpass, but when they've been able to do that, they've had more success. And they were hoping for more of that tonight. And it's tipped to the middle. It's handled by Londot. Now back across. Egan! And she really slapped it down the line for the kill. And Ohio State out to a good start. That's another thing they wanted to do is take advantage of momentum. The set they won against Maryland, they've won eight points in a row, but then they weren't able to carry that into the next set. But here they won the first set, and they've got a quick start to the second. Yeah, and that was something they've struggled with early in the season, in particular the match at USC. Several times they went on runs to get either even or even go ahead in the match, and USC would find a way to crawl back into it. And uh, Ohio State, you got out of system at times to get it to Get, let the Trojans back into that and eventually win that match. We're, we're definitely seeing a better response from Ohio State when Rutgers starts to put on a push. Four contacts there. Rutgers never really did get control of the ball there on that last attempt. And the Hardison does this time as she doesn't waste any time putting that one away. She has a really quick swing. That's what I th impresses me with her. You see a lot of players. Londa, one of them, you see the big jump and the big windup. Hardison, very, very quick with that swing almost like a tennis serve. One block away from Rally Air at top 10 solo blocks. 
And she's got a quick arm swing as she demonstrated there. Tipped over. She's just a sophomore. They've got a lot of good young talent on this team. Down the line and the kill recorded by Bolin. And that makes it 3-5. Bowling a freshman, another Ohioan out of uh, Lebanon down there near Cincinnati. And she goes for the line shot, which is usually the harder shot because there's not as much room for error, but she actually got it inside. And there's in the middle, Riley with the kill again. Raider, Riley Raider. And she's now starting to make her presence felt after just the single kill in that opening set. And that illustrates what you were talking about, Greg, the strength of the middles for the Buckeyes. They need better, to get better play out of those middle players, and they're getting it tonight so far. Said Riley Rader, an All-American back in 21. And they found the setter on that first ball contact. And Ohio State was ready, then Londot put it over, but not enough juice on that, but they were able to at least Keep the ball in play. Now an overpass, a free ball here, and it will be put away by Brandewi to make it seven to three. Yeah, Bowen couldn't do much about that, as we'll see, as we see Riley Raider, the All-America, as you mentioned, for 2021, going back to serve for the Buckeyes. She had 10 kills in the Maryland match and hit 440. Over now to the right. It's tipped over, but covered by Brandeweed. And that, what a shot there from the back row by Egan. She was probably three feet behind the 10 foot line and made no mistake whatsoever. Yeah, it caught Kinsey Deerstead a little off the guard there. She was playing well back near the back line, and that ball had a little bit of Novak Djokovic topspin on it and dipped right in front of her. She couldn't dig it out. Raider. Got a career record hitting percentage of 394. And there's a kill from the left side, this time by Avery Jesuit. She's a freshman who can step up with some big efforts. 11 kills and a 305 hitting percentage against Michigan State in one of the tougher matches they played in the Big Ten. Yeah, Jesuit's been a big contributor. She's second to Kinkella on the team in kills with 161 coming in. So she's another one with a big future with this Rutgers team. Georgia Lee, one of the two setters they're using, although they're not using in that 6-2 alignment. And there, the back set and the kill by Londot. And it's 9-4. to four. Well, Londot continues to lead the way. That's her sixth, and she's still yet to have an attack error in this match. She had 15 kills, 14 digs yesterday. Her 15th double-double of the year. And again, that's another part of her leadership, being willing to do some of the dirty work to show what the other younger players, what it takes. Overpass again and put away by Egan. And again, that goes back to a tough serve by Londot. And she has been serving aggressively in this match on more than one occasion, setting up easy putaways because they just simply could not handle her serve. Yeah, Jen Flynn Oldenburg has talked about the serve being so important to getting the attack, and that, that, that overhit was created by the excellent serve. That time, a much better job of passing it, and they find that opening Landot had a chance to pancake it, but could not quite do it. But Kenzie Deerstad this time passed the serve very effectively. Yeah, can tell a good vision to see that opening down there on that side of the floor, knowing Londot was playing too far back. They thought to get the uh, floor cleaned up. A little condensation. Second of four consecutive matches, the Buckeyes will play at home. Here, Washington will be in town on Friday, 7 p.m. start. That will also be available here on Big Ten Plus. Here's Coach Caitlin Schweighoffer, and she has done a very good job with this team. She actually uh, took over in the COVID year, and. They've been improving every year until this one, but she's very optimistic that they can continue that trajectory after this season. They'd like to get a little momentum here late in the year. Tipped over, and they had a hard time handling that, and a double contact ends up being called as Egan just managed to tip that one over, just trying to make some lemonade out of a lemon on that, and it worked out for her. <laughs> Art by accident, if you will. It doesn't always have to be pretty. And that serve goes long. Fourth service error on Ohio State compared to five for Rutgers. And now Deerstad 
did a great job breaking that service run of the Buckeyes' Londot with that fine pass to serve. Now let's see what kind of damage she could inflict from the service line. She goes short with that. Londot is able to play it, block, and waiting in the back row instead of pushing up, keeping that ball alive. Swung out wide, tipped over by Byzantine, but Selman is there. Roll shot from the back. It's handled by Dutton. Big swing off the back set. Now back in the middle and slashing away and getting the kill. Brandewe is again, they work the middle effectively and it's 12-6. Yeah, Brandewe and Raid are being very effective in the middle in those center attacks after getting the ball out wide, getting that Rutgers defense a little bit of separation there up at the net. And then once again, they come out to do a little housekeeping on the court for the second time and just a few points and uh, Landat helping out. I guess she really has done it all for yeah. this program yeah. over yeah, she, her career, including yeah. helping to wipe the condensation yeah. off the floor. Yeah. Three times the first team All-Ohio selection for the Utica Redskins out northeast of Columbus. Well, there's a tough serve despite the gallant attempt at pancaking the ball by Lee. No one could handle that, and Hasbrook with an ace. And again, the serve creating the point for the Buckeyes that Rutgers is going to call another timeout. And this set working out very much similar to the first so far, and Ohio State has been able to carry that momentum into the second set. And we'll be right back on BTN+. Plus. So far, a workmanlike effort by Ohio State as they led practically the entire way against Rutgers in set number one, and now looking to be in solid shape in set two at 13 to six, and Hasbrook to serve. Ohio State's offense has been very effective, especially passing the ball. They've been staying, been able to stay in system. 19 assists on the 22 kills for the Buckeyes. Byzantine with the kill as Raider got over there, but. Ball ricocheted out, and that makes it 7-13. Byzantine can do more than just serve, although she's been one of the two top servers on the Rutgers squad this year. This is Bolin now. And the freshman setter is pressed into action with the injury to Ali Borellis. And they find the setter off that pass, and then the kill by Londot from the back row. And it hardly matters where she swings from. She is very dangerous. Now she's got the great athletic ability, the leaping ability, and more importantly, she saw that again. There was not a, it was not a wall and uh, at the uh, middle of the net for the Rutgers defense, and she was able to overpower it. Tuman on the serve. Back out for Hartman, who has been their top hitter, but this time they were able to react. And again, it's Raider and Londot there on the block to deny Hartman, who has almost half of the kills for Rutgers, 6 of 13. And when they go back to her time and time again, that makes it a little easier for the defense to anticipate and that short serve. They've been working that very, very well here in this match. Again, giving them a chance for a free ball. And a big swing. What a block, though, in the middle by Hardison with assistance from Hartman. It looked like Ohio State had a chance for a really good approach and big swing there. 
Uh, Hardison again coming up big defensively for the Scarlet Knights. There she because she hadn't gotten over in time, but she was in the right place to make that block. She has one solo block and three assists tonight. Yeah, they didn't really seal that block, but it didn't matter. Mondot comes right back though for the Buckeyes on a cross court shot to make it 16 8. And again, Landau coming from that left side as the better angle for that cross court shot, much like we saw the server, the freshman, Emily Selman, in that first set. Serve is short, handled by Deerstad and Hardison. And she's starting to emerge as someone who looks very much like a difference maker up there in the middle both in terms of blocking and attacking. Yeah, Hardison a bit like Londa, doing it both offensively and defensively, the sophomore out of Palm Bay, Florida. And now she's back to serve. Let's see how she does in that capacity. Good effort by Hasbrook. And then they go out wide with the ball hit the antenna on the swing by Grace Egan. And that's the hazard of trying to play that line shot. One of the hazards, if that antenna's right there, just a little bit of a miss hit and it go in the antenna. And Hardison again, another sophomore. Not an excellent young talent on this Rutgers team put over on the second ball, but they're gonna say it's a carry. And it is 11 to 16. Now Hardison with two kills and seven attacks. And again, I mentioned the four blocks she's been in on, one solo. And then showing that she is a factor of serving, too, as she dials up an ace here her to first, make it 12-16. Yeah, her first ace after two service errors previously. And Rutgers trying to creep closer. They have not been in the lead in this second set. And they haven't really even been in that close contention, but they're creeping into that range now. This time they attack on the right, Landot, and the block got there. That was Jesuits again, and could not be handled by Byzantine, and a much-needed kill there for the Buckeyes after Rutgers was making a move on them. Yeah, they defended the first attempt well, but the second bite of the cherry for, for Landot, a lot deeper, and as you said, very, very hard to handle. Raider on the serve. Played by Deerstad and the quick set. And once again, Hartman is back. And that was played very well off the serve. And that gave him a chance to get what they wanted and again, on the, the attack. And again, the quick swing by Hartman, that made the difference. Raider didn't have a chance to get set up and parry that or dig it out. And that's what made the kill possible. And we're even to get a soft block up to help out the back row. Now it's Georgia Lee. Hasbrook didn't get enough of that. It's what she wanted, but they still get a good swing, and it bounded out. The block was right there, but they could not keep it in play. Robinson almost had herself a monster block, but not quite. Yeah, she was trying. Shot went just wide, trying to avoid the block there. Instead, it gives the point to Ohio State. Mondot back to the service line. And an ace, Mondot. What a great, what great a career she had. Three All-America selections. Last year she was only an All-Region selection. That, that shows true. how incredibly successful she has been throughout her collegiate career. And that's the third ace for the Buckeyes. And get to the net there and put it back. A pancake, Mondot. Second time we've seen her do that. She's an All-Around player. In the middle and tried to pancake another one at the ball was slightly mishit, but it just managed to find the floor. Yeah, I think that was Natalie Robinson who got that last touch trying to sweep it over the net when she saw that space there, as you said, just out of the reach though of Londot trying for another pancake. As you see her opposite number, Kinkella giving the directions for this upcoming serve by, by Lee. That's what coach likes about Londot, just aside from her immense talent and her, the numbers that she accumulates, but when your top player it goes down, pancakes, goes down again, down up, down up, hustling like that, it has to rub off on all the other players on the team, especially the younger ones. That's what Wayne Gretzky always talked about, being setting the example of the hardest worker on the team and not just the greatest player. 
And that can be a go a long way towards helping you be the best. In yes. the middle and put down by Tuman on that second ball. She dumps it over and it makes it 20 to 14. Yeah, it's only her second kill. We haven't talked about her a whole lot. The, the uh, sophomore out of Swickley, Pennsylvania. And the last time she tried it, the blocker, Hardison, was right on her. This time she saw she had the opening and took it. That's the real key to that maneuver is picking your spots. Mondot from the back, too much on it. And it's 15-20. Rutgers still hanging around within striking distance, and it'll be Deerstad again to the service line. Tuman with 17 of the 24 assists for Ohio State. Goes short, but it's handled by Selman. Deerstad flags that one down, then they go across to Byzantine and overpass Londot, the free ball opportunity, and the swing for the kill by Kinkilla, who has not been as active maybe in this match as she's been several others, such as the one when she had the 29, but they can go to her at any time. Yeah, it's her, only her third kill of the match. She didn't start. They've been rotating her in and out quite a bit, but uh, as I said, last year, 14 kills against Ohio State, and the Buckeyes certainly know what the Australia under 23 international is capable of. Yeah, that block again out, so Selman with another kill as Hardison couldn't settle that. You know that the Rutgers team would like to set Kinkilla as much as possible to try to help her get to that 1,000 mark, or at least to become the all-time leading attacker in the history of Rutgers volleyball. Yeah, she's only 39 away from reaching that mark that coming into that match. 977 kills. But she'd like to go all the way for the 1,000. Londot, by comparison, got her 1,000 even last year, midway through. And the big swing and the block. And this time they do steer it to the middle. Tuman joined by Ragler. And it's 22-16. Zaria okay. Ragler stepping on and making a big contribution. Yeah, right away. She, double block. Yeah, great job getting in there, joining Tuman for that block. And that results in another timeout. Alex, Alex Lassa is the all-time leader in kills for Rutgers at that 9.79 mark, as you mentioned earlier. Well, 22 to 16 to score. Rutgers with their timeout, maybe their final chance to get a coach's point and turn the momentum around. But Ohio State has looked strong, and every time that Rutgers has seemed like they might be fashioning a bit of a comeback, Ohio State has been able to swing the momentum back in their direction. Yeah, for the most part, just like in the first set, they've been in pretty much in control. And when Rutgers has tried to rally and get a run going, Ohio State has responded very, very well, not just with Emily Landau, but also Grace Egan and Emmy Selman. And you see Hannah Williford down there. Let's throw it down to her for an update. Thanks, guys. Now, head coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg told us that keeping the middles involved is one of the keys to success for the Buckeyes. And one of those middles who makes all the difference is Riley Raider. Last night, Raider had 10 kills, 25 attacks, and zero errors. So consistency is one of her strong suits. And so far tonight, she only has two kills, but you guessed it zero errors so the more that the Buckeyes can keep feeding Raider and all of their middles for that matter the better off they'll be. Guys back to you. Anna was quite the volleyball player in her day at Bowling Green High School in good old Northwest Ohio and I got to get a word in for Reese Webker from Centerville. Those uh, Centerville Elks always great. Yeah, didn't they have a quarterback who played at Ohio State a, while, uh, a few years ago? I do believe so. Yeah, Herb Street, I think, was his name. They had a lot of other uh, grads that played over there, and their elk pride never dies, as they say. Right. And there is set in the middle, but not in the wheelhouse of Hardison that time. And it is 23-16. Actually, that was uh, Krista Dooley, redshirt freshman, into the game out of Plano, Texas. And it is Ohio State now trying to come up with this point. That would get them to set point. That short serve, they've been doing very well, and they induce an overpass with it. And that allows the middle Ragler to finish it off. The redshirt sophomore out of Maryland 
And she has now been involved in a big block and now a big kill, and they have eight points in reserve at set point. And Zara Ragler coming out and making a great contribution here in this second set, putting the Buckeyes on the verge of a 2-0 lead. Serving at Allie Dutton, who passes it well. That's going to be a joust. Tip back over, and the Buckeyes get it. Mia Tuman out fencing Zora Hardison. And so lies and statistics. Yes. And th in this case, no, the statistics don't lie. No, no lies detected, as the kids say now on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so back comes Rutgers trying to turn things around, and they get off to a good start. This can kill a. The no lie from the junior from Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, no lie from the Australia under 23 international areas. Ken Kelly gets her fourth kill of the night. Now she won seven championships in Australia, so that's going way back to youth days. And has been one of the top players. That serve is long. Coach was saying that volleyball is not exactly the most cutting edge sport in Australia, and she's really very well known as maybe one of the very best in that sport. Yeah, Kinkella talked about in a video that the Rutgers volleyball team, uh, social media team posted earlier this season. Basketball is much more popular for girls and women uh, down under than volleyball is. And even some other sports too. Like cricket, for example. Yeah. And there's the kill. And once again, Ragler has come on and really been a difference maker ever since the latter stage of that second set. Yeah, two kills and a block for Ragler coming off the bench late in that second set. And again, another quick swing. We saw that several times from Egan and Brandewi, that quick swing right in the middle to create the point. Makes it two to one for the Buckeyes, but coming right back, trying to match him swing for swing. Kukella, they bump this one over. It's a real free ball opportunity here. They don't get a good swing out of it though. Tight into the net, had to be bumped backward and another one, but that's a tough opportunity. And the great up by Deerstad on the swing by Selman. And then in the middle, all kinds of things were going on on that rally, but Natalie Robinson finally put a stop to it. Yeah, it was a, a de some desperate defending on both sides. The big key there, Deerstad now on the service line, getting that dig, and that set up the chance for Robinson to get the point for Rutgers. And the Scarlet Knights did not lead in that second set. Deerstad serves to Selman. She handles that. Now Landot, she couldn't swing, though. I had to just tip it as it was in too tight. Selman puts it back over on the right. Handled by Tuman. Now back across. Swing there by Sellers. That was blocked to get another opportunity. Pushes it deep and the kill. As Byzantine could not quite get there. And again, they stopped her on the big swing, but then she just placed one deep on a tip and got the kill. Yeah, Tuman found the open space. She can see it right there up the line. She's got the open spot. And she goes for it in the native of Swickley, Pennsylvania, with a, num, uh, a point that might might have uh, might bring out the scratch right back with a hacksaw line. Well, she just got another ace, and again, an off-speed serve. So she's getting it done with finesse as well as power. Mike Lang, the great Pittsburgh Penguins play-by-play -play announcer, with that one. Great balls of fire, among many many others. <laughs> And there's a swing, and Ohio State awarded that point as the shot went long, despite the appeal for the touch. Only can kill a second attacking error in 16 attacks tonight. Ohio State once again off to a good start, as they have been throughout the match, but that serve goes long. And as long as you're serving aggressively, you don't mind an occasional service error like them to be long rather than short. Five for the Buckeyes now. And Rutgers only led briefly in that first set and did not lead at all in the second. So they've been fighting uh, from behind all night. This is a test for Rutgers with an 0-14 record, down two sets on the road. They're going to keep battling. And their coach says that they've been doing that all year. And there's Hardison with the block, and she turns it into the kill. No shortage of work rate from Zora Hardison, that's for sure. She's, to me, been the most impressive of yeah. the Rutgers players in this match. Yeah, she's been doing it both offensively and defensively. And again, her, her work rate is terrific. She digs in there just as much as any other Rutgers player as only a sophomore. Here's stand up. She's the kind of player you can build a team around. And there is a kill as 
It was disguised by Jesuits. They thought she might be going cross court, then she went line. And again, despite the fact that there wasn't a lot of velocity on the shot, it did the job. Yeah, good recognition for the freshman out of Plymouth, Minnesota to see that open space. Five all. Rutgers really like to push this to a fourth set if they can. And that swing just wide and Ragler just jumped on that and was waiting for it, but it was just a little bit off the target. Now, I like the confidence she's playing with coming in late in that first set, got a couple of big plays, and they've kept her on through the second set, and she's come up big for the Buckeyes off the bench. Georgia Lee on the serve, Londot came up from the back and put it away, and it is six all. Londot continues her streak of double-digit kills. She has not, never failed to record less than 10 kills in a match in her Ohio State career. It's a great approach that she took on that shot. Got it completely in stride. Ragler, that ball was almost punched back. Okay. And it's a free ball. They do that on the beach. Mondot with the kill, they won't get to it. And it's seven to six. Yeah, Lexi Vizantine looked like a football goalkeeper punching a ball, cross ball away from her goal. We get another look at that big swing here from Wandot. Record her 11th kill of the night. Yeah, you don't give her two consecutive chances to make a big swing. The first one will break down the defense, and the second one will score. And there's another line shot, but that one's handled by Tuman, but just couldn't quite settle it for one of her teammates coming in. But Jesuits pounded that ball so hard that even though she was able to get a platform under it, she couldn't elevate the ball to allow one of her teammates to arrive. Yeah, she hit it so hard, Tuma was conscious of trying to settle that down. Again, a little like a first touch in football, but it went right up in front of her, and her teammates could, she couldn't get out of the way for her teammates to come in and get that second touch. Dutton with the serve. Nice pass, and then look at that once again, despite the fact that Dutton got a real nice platform under the ball. It was just so much power on that shot that she couldn't handle Londot's big drive. Londot now hitting 476, only two attacking errors for her. She had nine kills after the second set. Now she's up to 12, and no one even close for the Buckeyes any longer, but there's once again, Hardison dumping the ball over there to make it eight all. And again, impressed with her intelligence, reading the defense, seeing what's there, seeing what the opening is and what her options are. And again, shot selection like in basketball. She realized the quick swing would create the point because there was some space in the middle of the defense. In Palm Bay, Florida, she's serving now, tipped over, but the blockers were waiting. Once again, that serve was in tight. Now the big swing but not really quite in rhythm was Grace, Re Grace Egan. And it's wide, and Rutgers, for one of the rare times tonight, is inched into a lead. Yeah, first time they've led since early in the first set. Egan, again, not able to quite get on top of that ball, resulting in it going wide. Zora Hardison making a name for herself tonight. The serve, the joust, stayed on the Ohio State side. Sellers sets it from the back. Mondot across. They should get a good swing out of this. Do, but they got the soft block there. Hasbrook could play it. Another one put to the back by Egan. Another good attack, and two or three times in a row, Rutgers had a chance to really swing away, and they finally made it count. It's Anna Hartman who continues to be their top attacker. She had seven kills after the second set. Nobody closer than three, and there is another one. Yeah, Hartman has been uh, the leader of the attack, leading the team with nine kills now, the 23 for the Scarlet Knights. Had one early in the third set and another one to complement that. And they're still going for it, but that over the reach of the would-be hitter, Robinson. Yeah, I tried to do a little quick set for Robinson, but uh, the set was mishit as we see the freshman uh, libero Olivia Hasbrook for the Buckeyes back into the match. Grace Egan to serve. It's a back set, and it's dropped in for the kill. And once again, Anna Hartman continues to do the job very well and with a variety of different shots. And it is now 11-9 for Rutgers, and they may be starting to 
build some confidence that, hey, we can get this set. And if they get it to four, you just never know what might happen. Yeah, when, when you've been in control, as the Buckeyes have been for most of this match, definitely do not even want to see a fourth set, let alone a fifth. Big swing by Sel Selman. They stopped that and then put right back by Robinson in the middle, and it is 12 to 9 suddenly. After Ohio State, they got off to sort of a business like start, an early lead here, and now Rutgers has come back on them hard, and Ohio State's going to have to do some regrouping. Timeout on the court. We'll be right back on Big Ten Plus. like we were headed towards a short night, but Rutgers throwing a little bit of a monkey wrench in that plan, up 12-9 in the third set. Let's check in again with Hannah Williford. Thanks, guys. Now, sometimes you just need a little stat breakdown, so let's see how things are shaking out. Emily Londot for the Buckeyes is leading the way with 12 kills, but that's no surprise. The outside hitter always stays super involved. She also has six digs, a block, an ace, and an assist, so she's touching just about every stat category. Now, for Rutgers, Anna Hartman is the clear offensive leader. She has 10 kills so far, but when we look at blocking, we had said Natalie Robinson is their clear best blocker, but today Zora Hardison is amazing. She has five blocks. She's been involved in almost all of the Rutgers' six blocks so far. Guys, back 12 to you. 9 Rutgers trying to extend their lead, but they go on the slide, and Brandwee finishes it off. And that was a big point for Ohio State, that coach's point off the timeout. And Brandon, we now with her fifth kill yet to have an attack error. She's hitting 625 now to lead the Buckeyes. A great cross court shot. And this is what the Buckeyes really need some more of. Get some more contribution from Brandon Wee, Selman, and Egan. Londot still scoring about 34% of the kills, which has been the season average. Yeah, there's an ace as they bobbled that serve. And that. And there's that serving you talked about many times, Greg Frankie. It's been what's really made the Buckeyes, it had kept the Buckeyes in control of this match for the most part. And they're coming back again just when it looks like Rutgers has some momentum going. And they've been doing that all night. And that one found the line as neither Kinkella nor Dutton were really sure how to play that ball. And now three points off the timeout. And we're back to even at 12. And the sixth ace for the Buckeyes. Well, you know that they do not want this to go to a fourth set after it looked like they had a really good hold on the match. Now it's Kintella across. Mondot covering in the back. That was on the wrong side of Selman. And then they come right back and get a kill from Byzantine, and that was unfortunate. It looked like they had a good chance to set Selman, but it was in too tight, and that gave Rutgers a chance to come back, and they took advantage of it. They certainly did, as you see. Byzantine now on the service line for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And she is a server who can produce aces. Selman, and they got their timing <laughs> off there. And Ragler. Yeah, they didn't know whether to stick or twist, by the time they figured it out, the ball had dropped as Rutgers get their noses back in front. Ragler got caught in between there, and it's now 14 to 12. Byzantine again. Londot passes serve out wide for Selman. Pushes it deep. Over on the right, the big swing by Kinkilla. Selman. Deerstadt handled that from... The back row calling for the touch was Byzantine, but 
That appeal falls on deaf ears. I'm impressed by the freshman, uh, Emmy, Emmy Selman, recognizing on their first swing she had that Kinkella was there for the block and went tried to go over top of her. Then the second time Kinkella came for the block, she went cross court. It goes short, but this time ready and waiting with Jeskowitz and Kinkella puts it down. And that makes it 15-13. said that she can emerge at any time as a go-to hitter. And there she tipped it past the two blockers. Hasbrook couldn't get there. And it is a two-point Rutgers lead with Deerstadt serving. And she's got a little bit of a rhythm going on her serve. Selman had to lay out to keep that ball alive. Pushed deep to the corner. Quick in the middle. Radisson, but a good up there by Hasbrook. Londot scores, and Hasbrook keeps the play alive, and Londot gets that point back for the Buckeyes. Yeah, you call it, Greg. Hasbrook, the dig, kept that going and gave Londot the opportunity. There's the dig by the freshman libero, and Londot saw there was some space, and again, went for place for rather than power and found it right in front of Kenzie Deerstad. And Egan had to turn setter there and did a good job of it, delivering the ball to Londot. That ball hit the tape back. Over by Jeskowitz and just misplayed as Egan was diving to try to keep it alive. And it is 16-14 Rutgers. Yeah, you hear several Rutgers fans, supporters on hand over there on that far side trying to urge their team on. And you, you said it earlier, Greg, Ohio State doesn't want to get to a fourth set. It's like Dennis Conner, the great America's Cup sailor, always likes to say, when they're down, jump on them. Mm -hmm. Ohio State not able to do that here in set number three. And then with the abbreviated fifth set, anything can happen if they can get it that far. But Landot with the kill. And everybody was just going after that ball, and Byzantine ended up in the seats. Yeah, Byzantine went crashing into the first row of the stands, those hard metal and plastic stands. You'll see it here as she goes flying over to try to get rescue this ball that was dug up by Deerstead, crashing into those. Fortunately, she hit the folding chairs, which gave way, as opposed to the metal stands that are behind that, but she seems to be none the worse for wear. Let me get those seats back in place. That was a great back set to where there were no blockers, and when Landau has no blockers, that's trouble. That ball out, though, on the block attempt, and it is 17-15 Rutgers. And when you have not won a match in the Big Ten, a set victory is like a match victory, and they're closing in on it right here. And they have never beaten the Buckeyes in Columbus. They're 1-19 lifetime against Ohio State. Now that serve, however, is just out. Dutton is going cross court. It went wide on that inside out serve attempt. And she saw the space over there on that far side and found it, but again, just a touch overcooked. Seventh service error against the Scarlet Knights. Mondot, she's also served effectively in this match. That one's put back out nicely. If it looked like it might be a joust, they got a good swing, and then Egan. Puts it into the net, and the blockers were there. And it's 18 to 16, Rutgers and Smiles abound on their side of the net. Yeah, that ball is set. Another one left a little bit short for Egan to attack. We've seen that a few times here in the second and third sets. Now Hardison, who has been quite impressive all match long. And they go for Brandewi. And that one's wide. Brandewi, a local product from Bishop Watterson, who is the Ohio player of the year prior to coming to Ohio State. But at that time, she could not connect. Timeout, Rutgers with a 19 to 16 advantage. And if they can just push through to 25, they got a new lease on life and chance to build on some momentum of their own. As you've mentioned before a couple of times, Greg, Zora Hardison really the key for this Rutgers team. And she had an impressive performance last year when these two teams met here, eight kills, five blocks, one of them solo, and she's come up big both sides for the Scarlet Knights, keeping them in the match in the first two sets and getting the, helping them get this lead here in set number three as we get a look at the Rutgers coach, Caitlin Schweighoffer, former St. John's captain. She captained the Johnnies to the 2006 Big East Championship. So she certainly knows what it takes to be a leader and has done a terrific job with this Rutgers program. Admittedly, a down year for the Scarlet Knights, but 
She is very, very optimistic for what the future holds with the experienced players they have and the young kids getting the experience they're going to need to compete in a very tough Big Ten conference. Keep in mind, seven Big Ten teams are ranked in the top 25 in the AVCA poll. And another one, Washington, received votes as well. And the Huskies will be here on Friday to take on the Buckeyes. Coach Carolyn, Caitlin Schweighoffer, she was Atlantic 10 setter of the year in multiple conference and freshman awards in that conference. And then went on to coach at her alma mater, then moved along and now is the reins of Rutgers. She coached Northeastern for a stint as well and has been successful everywhere she's gone. And this year has been a bit of an aberration for this Rutgers team and she fully expects to get right back on track next year with the likes of Hardison that is reason for optimism. A big swing and a kill from the right side by Brandewe and again the former Ohio Ms. Volleyball comes through to make it 17-19. And now she'll go back to the service line after getting the Buckeyes to within two. She now has six kills and only one attacking error tonight. And they try for that short serve, but that time it didn't have enough distance on it. And the service air puts Rutgers up 20 to 17. And of course the Buckeyes now have little margin for air. You don't want to be giving away anything unforced when the Scarlet Knights are this close to forcing a fourth set. Kaylin Schweighoff are using much more of her bench too, as opposed to Jen Flynn Oldenburg for Ohio State. Lily Bolin. And they give that point back. And by the same token, Rutgers, they don't want to give anything away for free now as they're starting to get closer to salting the set away. But you can't let that take away from your aggressiveness, especially with serving. And they have a couple of points to spare here at the moment. Hasbrook, again with a short serve, this time covered by Dutton. Out wide, and the kill by Kinkilla. And it is 21-18. Yeah, they set her up very, very well for that cross court. There it is, a gorgeous pass. And Kinkilla has an easy opportunity to overpower the freshman Hasbrook to get her sixth kill of the night. Second place in career kills, rally era for Rutgers in her career. And then the roll shot turns into a kill for Sellers. The blocker's got a good piece of it, but not enough. And it is 19-21, so Rutgers is getting close, but Ohio State nipping at their heels. Yeah, right. With Mia Tooman back to serve. Yeah, I think Ohio State wants to get a little bit of a run here right now and don't give Rutgers any more confidence. But, but that gives them more confidence with the service error. That's the way you don't want to miss when you're serving. If you're serving aggressively, but if you serve short like that. But they've been, they've been going with a short serve, and it has been effective throughout the match. But they've been adjusting to a Rutgers. They've been seeing it coming. They've had a couple players up near yeah, that 10-foot line more where effective. a lot of those serves have been landing. At passing that short serve than they were earlier in the match. Out wide, big swing, Londot gets Ohio State to 20. With Emmy Selman, the freshman turning provider with a great pass. And the freshman there from Burtonsville, Maryland will now serve for the Buckeyes. She needs to come up with a run here. Can put him in position to win. Jesuits, Hasbrook didn't get enough of that and was hoping somebody would bail the play out, but they couldn't quite get there. And now it is 23-20 for Rutgers. Yeah, they just, can smell it now. Just too good a swing for Hasbrook to handle. That's one. She'll she'll be better at that as she gains more experience. She's certainly getting that, having to handle those big swings from Emily Londot in training. Jesuits, another excellent freshman. Got a fine nucleus of underclassmen on this team, much belying their record. Here's a serve, handled by Egan, and the ball ricochets out as too much power produced by Londot and the Buckeyes. Yeah, Jesuits, closer. And, Jesuits and Hardison were there defensively. You see it right here. They get the wall, the, the roof up there, but too strong off the hand of Hardison. The ball goes out, giving the Buckeyes a chance to get closer. Got to try to angle that ball towards the middle, but when it's coming that hard, it's tough to do. Easier said than done. Londot again. 
Byzantine crossed by Hardison. Tuman went down, and there's a touch for sure. And that will be a kill. But two terrific passes with Zara Ragler, the redshirt sophomore from Gambrels, Maryland, to set up Londot in the second bite of the cherry. Comes up with the point to get the Buckeyes within one. They are really there now. And Rutgers had looked like they were in position to annex this third set now are going to have to do something that they really haven't had to do that often during the year, which is play in a really big point in a really closely contested set. And we're going to find out a little bit about this young team now. And the same can be said for the Buckeyes, how they push through here on their home court. Yeah, and these are the kind of matches, too. Not just, you know, it's not just about tonight's result, but in the future, because this will continue to happen for these two teams. And for young teams and young players like this, the experience gained from a match like this is going to come up big, come up big for them and bode well for them in 2025 and beyond. Again, playing in a very tough conference in the Big Ten. Well, teams do drills where they simulate this kind of situation, but there's nothing like doing it in the midst of a highly competitive match, especially on the road and such an electric atmosphere as we have here at the Cavelli Center. And this is going to be really interesting to see how these two teams respond, and Jen Flynn Oldenburg, she's still smiling, she's enjoying it. This is what volleyball is all about, as she knew very well in her outstanding career right here with the Ohio State Buckeyes, although she played her matches at St. John Arena. And they went to the NCAA four straight times, and she, she also went on won to be silver. very successful in the professional ranks yeah, and coaching also, national ranks. Yeah, and she won a silver medal as a player with the United States at a world championship back in 2002. Yeah, that was the world championships. And she was the starting setter on that team. So she's been around enough to really feel like, hey, this is the essence of the sport. Here we go. 22-23. Jesuits, the swing, the block, diving in there to keep it alive. What an effort by Georgia Lee. But Ohio State with a free ball. Egan counts it. Tied. Well, it was a great effort by Lee, but they were definitely out of sync on the defensive side of the net. Yeah, Caitlin Hoffman there now into the match for the first time, the sophomore out of Novi, Michigan. But the big kill from Egan to put this match uh, set back on level terms for the Buckeyes. Hoffman, a great dig. She was playing great leading the team in digs until she went down injured. Now she's back out, and Hardison didn't get enough on that, and Ohio State suddenly is the team with match point. And timeout. Rutgers will plan their final stand here, but even though Ohio State has themselves a match point, Rutgers is one point away from extending it beyond the 25. What a great dig there. You mentioned Hoffman just onto the court, and she definitely made a big play. Hardison has been converting those kinds of tips all game long. That time couldn't quite do it. Yeah, she knew what she wanted to do with it. She saw the open space in the middle. We've seen her do that several times in this match, but she couldn't quite execute, as you said, Greg. But again, Caitlin Hoffman, the sophomore of Novi, Michigan, with the important dig that kept that point alive and enabled Ohio State to get to match point as Brutus yeah. tries to fire up this fan. He's ready. But, but, you know, that's not an easy thing to do, to come on. You get the ball in your hands in a serving situation when you haven't been playing, and then to have to be in the firing line of a shot like that and make a perfect dig. That really just shows that the ability to, to stay focused and make the most of your opportunity. Yeah, it's part of that team culture. Jen Flynn Oldenburg is trying to build a little bit like uh, what we see for the women's hockey team. We got the split with Wisconsin this weekend. Well, if they can get a couple of national championships and a runner-up in a three-year stretch. They yeah, they played the last like three finals. Definitely on the right track. Yeah, so here we go. Hoffman to serve to try to put it away. And this place will erupt if she does. The fans are on their feet. 24-23. Tough serve. Jesuits. Selman in the middle. Tuman. They try to put it down. Brandewee covered. Big swing. Back across. And double contact is called. And that evens it up again. The Rutgers able to force extra points here in set number three. You can hear the fans. They're not happy with that decision. And 
And it is Allie Dutton now. She's going to move to the other side of the court. See where she goes with this serve. A wave of noise there. Egan passes it, gets it to the net. Landot down the line. Yes. And they're one point away again. And that's why she's an All-American and a leader on this team. Coming up with the big point when they need it. Going for the line shot, the more difficult one. There was enough space there. She saw it and put it right inside the line. Well placed. And now she's going to serve to try to put it away. And she's been serving very well. But that one is handled. Over on the right, it's long. No touch. Ohio State wins it in three. Coming from behind late in the third set to win it 26-24. And extend their mastery over Rutgers to 9-0. And this. after a tough loss last night, Certainly uh, defending their court with a solid performance is what they wanted. Yeah, well, we saw again, we talked about, you talked about the serving uh, of Ohio State, how good it's been. The serve, the service is the last few points would set up the opportunity for Ohio State, both for the kill by Londot to get it to match point, and then the overhit there by Rutgers to finish it off for the Buckeyes. Well, Rutgers, we, we talked about how are they going to come through in a set where they had a chance to win. And they did credit them when they were facing match point. They managed to get it beyond the 25. They had a couple of opportunities to put points away that would have really put them in position to win. They could not quite do it tonight, but the more they're in that situation, the better they're going to do. And they've obviously got a very talented young squad, as you see the Buckeyes accepting the plaudits of their fans. And they, too, have a very young up-and-coming squad. We said at the outset that both teams are looking for much better things next year. And by the looks of tonight, I don't think there's anything to suggest that that won't happen for both these teams. You know, we were just talking about Ohio State, Wisconsin, the women's hockey. Mark Johnson, the uh, women, the... Yeah, we'll, we'll send it down to hand in just a moment. When we talk about Mark Johnson, the Wisconsin women's hockey coach, talks about how every game is an opportunity. And certainly... the. Um, Caitlin Schweighoffer will to look at this opportunity to teach your players, hey, this is what you're going to be facing throughout your careers, and this is the kind of situation you're going to be in a lot playing in the Big Ten. And as they play the alma mater here, it's uh, Hannah Williford is down on the court. We'll be going to her presently and as they bask in the moment of victory here. Let's take a look. Meanwhile, Emily Londot, and she certainly played like the team leader and All-American, multiple-time All-American that she is. Yeah, 18 kills and only two attacking errors uh, for the match, hitting 533. Also, seven digs showing her grit as well as we see some of the big swings she brought off to lead the Buckeyes in scoring errors. But Showing the variety. They had her attacking from both sides. They flip flop her and Selman multiple times throughout the match. And so that makes it a little bit harder for the defense to keep track of her. Well, and the other thing, too, as you notice, at the end of the match, like a basketball player wanting to take the last shot, she was taking the big swings with the match on the line. And as those stats indicate, she came through almost every time, only with those two attack errors throughout the course of the match. And you see her down standing by with Hannah Williford. And we'll have an opportunity to hear from how the match was from her perspective. And let's go down there now. Look at me. We can just look at each other. Emily, congratulations. After a tough four set loss last night, how were you able to bounce back? Yeah, I think we moved on really quickly. We came in this morning for practice with good energy, good intent. And I think that carried into this game today. You know, I was talking to the Rutgers coaches before the game, and they said, we have to try to find a way to contain Emily Londot, but I don't think you can be contained. You had 18 kills. How do you always get the job done? I think it comes down to our defense, our serve receive, and just our other hitters um, doing their jobs and opening up the block for me. Now, Washington is up next. How can you build off of this three-set victory and try to come out on top? Yeah, I think we just have to remember the energy and the passion we played with tonight, and then go do it in practice next week so we can carry it into Friday. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Great job. Thank you.
Thank you so much, guys. Back to you. Well, it was a three-set match. Variety, 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 variety. Yo, yang ini tak banyak, anda kain yang ini pun ada review punya orang. Berangga ay, itu taksi ke ay, anda. Anda anda, mana dia arno runde? Yo, why? I'll review it. 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 I'll review